Hi, I'm Rob Versio. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at ProLiance Puget Sound Orthopedics, and today we're gonna to talk about the rotator cuff, what it is, what happens to it, and then what do we do about it. So the rotator cuff, if we were to look at this model of our shoulder here, this is kind of looking at our ball and socket joint, our arm creates the ball of the socket. We have four tendons and muscles that create the rotator cuff. There's one in the front, the subscapularis, one on top, the supraspinatus, and then two in back, the infraspinatus and the teres minor. And these muscles function to basically suck this ball into the socket and then allow the bigger muscles of our shoulder like our deltoid to have better functionality and more optimal use of the shoulder function. Unfortunately, our rotator cuff tendons are not built to last forever. They kind of liken it to the tires on your car. If you're doing donuts in the parking lot, your tires are gonna wear out sooner than if you're just driving 50 miles per hour on the freeway. And same thing being said for your shoulders. If you're doing a lot of heavy manual labor overhead use, they're gonna wear out a little bit faster than if you're doing a desk job. Now that doesn't mean that you can't still develop rotator cuff issues regardless of your job or your activity level, but it just everyone's a little bit different and you can kind of understand how they start to wear out. We know that rotator cuff issues are the most common cause of shoulder pain in patients older than 50 years old. And when we look into them, we actually know that probably a third to 40% of 60 year olds have something that's wrong with their rotator cuff. That doesn't necessarily mean they have pain in their shoulder, but the rotator cuff is at least starting to show signs of wear. And this advances to probably about 80% of 80 year olds and I would say 100% of 100 year olds are gonna have something that's wrong with their rotator cuff. It's important that we be very clear talking about how we classify and label these types of issues because there's what we call tendinosis or just inflammation of your rotator cuff tendon that isn't actually a tear. It's just swelling and irritation of the tendon. And then there's what we call partial thickness tearing, which is where when we look at the tendon, the tendon's still attached to the bone, but it's starting to thin kind of top to bottom versus a full tear is when the tendon actually is detaching completely from the bone. When we talk about these, it can make a big difference on what your functionality will be because a small partial tear can function fully normally but may still be very painful versus a full thickness tear may not be as painful but you may actually have loss of function because your shoulder is just not as working the way it's supposed to. Once we have a good idea that we know that the rotator cuff has been injured or is the source of your pain, then we talk about getting advanced imaging, whether an ultrasound or an MRI scan, to be able to look more closely. We usually do start with x-rays just to make sure that there's not a bony issue that's the cause of pain in someone's shoulder, but the x-ray doesn't show us their tendons. An MRI or an ultrasound will be able to tell us if there's a tear, where the tear is, and roughly how big it is. And that helps us to be able to understand what we can do about it. There's a lot of options to start with when we think about how we want to go about these rotator cuff issues. And we like to start simply. You may not need to do anything. Sometimes taking Motrin or another anti-inflammatory can resolve your shoulder pain, especially if you just have tendinosis. Maybe you need a course of physical therapy to work on strengthening and rehabbing your shoulder and keeping your better posture, which allows you to use your shoulder better. Eventually though, you may have so much pain that we need to do something else about it. Maybe we need to give a steroid injection that will calm down the inflammation and allow you to do therapy and rehab your shoulder that way. We know that if we've given an injection though, and the pain comes back fairly quickly, there usually is more of an underlying biomechanical problem that may require a more drastic intervention. And so once we've failed all of these other measures, that's when we talk about surgery. And the surgery is going in there usually with a camera through a couple small incisions and reattaching that rotator cuff tendon back down to the bone. And that basically will then allow it to heal back down and then your shoulder to function more optimally. There is a recovery process for this. We're working with a physical therapist to be able to strengthen these muscles in the appropriate time because we don't wanna pull that tendon right back off immediately. But overall, the recovery is good and we can generally get patients back to their normal level of activities they had before they had their problems. Now, there are certain type of rotator cuff tears that are not repairable and there are options for them, but that will be in another talk. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.